Hello students, welcome to my class for the question answer session on the chapter Analytical Chemistry. Here I will discuss different types of questions related to the topic and these will for sure help you answer your term papers and board papers as well. I will make sure that the video will upgrade you and help you have a better approach to the questions. So here we go. To begin with, I have provided the link to the notes on the description box which also has a well structured table to help you learn the color and solubility of the precipitate which is very important from the examination point of view. This was actually the table which is already given. Children, I am showing you here. Please learn the color and the solubility of the precipitates. It's really going to help you because I am sure there is going to be questions from this part. Second, please learn and check that you are able to write all the chemical equations correctly and balance them. Now, let's start with the type of questions and I have prepared a number of types here. For your convenience, please allow me to cover the rest of the part and explain you one by one so that it's easy for you to understand because you are going to get questions of different types. So to begin with, the first type that I have taken is give a chemical test to distinguish between lead chloride and zinc chloride. Here, I have kept the anion common because we are identifying the cation here and I have got a lead salt and a zinc salt. So to identify whether it's a lead or a zinc chloride, you have to take one reagent and add on both and show the difference in observation. So like you know that the ammonium hydroxide solution, both the salts lead chloride and zinc chloride will give you white precipitate but in excess of ammonium hydroxide, the lead chloride, white precipitate, is insoluble and the zinc chloride, which will give you white precipitate of zinc hydroxide, is soluble. So the lead hydroxide and zinc hydroxide formed due to few drops of ammonium hydroxide is white in both the cases, but one is insoluble and one is soluble. Based on that observation, you are identifying the salts. So how you are going to write? It will be easy and clear enough if you write the two substances given to you. In this case, I have taken lead chloride and zinc chloride. So when ammonium hydroxide solution is added to the salt solution, the given salt solution, a white precipitate is formed which is insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. Please underline the keyword. And with the other salt solution, when ammonium hydroxide solution is added to the salt solution, the given sample, a white precipitate is formed which is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. Please underline the keywords. The next type of question or the similar type a different example is how will you distinguish between ammonium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide we have started the chapter by telling that the chemical tests that we are going to do we will use the alkali sodium hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide. How will you distinguish the two? So, let's take a lead salt. Now, when we say lead salt, it can be lead chloride or lead sulfate. So, on adding a lead salt like lead chloride or lead sulfate solution 
to sodium hydroxide a white precipitate is formed which is soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide whereas on adding the same lead salt like if you have taken lead chloride you have to take lead chloride here also to ammonium hydroxide a white precipitate is formed which is insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide so when it is soluble it is sodium hydroxide when it is insoluble it is ammonium hydroxide you can write the same answer using a copper salt also a copper chloride or a copper sulfate so the copper chloride or the copper sulfate salt with sodium hydroxide is going to give you pale blue insoluble precipitate that means in excess of sodium hydroxide it is not soluble whereas that same copper salt when you add to sodium hydroxide initially it will give you pale blue precipitate which is going to give you a deep blue solution that means the precipitates dissolve in this case and you identify between sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide so if you have any other doubt regarding this please feel free to put it in the comment section and i'm surely get it to you i will see that i clear your doubts very properly and uh, just for one diy that is do it yourself i have given one similar question to you and i would surely want you all to answer it and i'm sure you can do it if you have gone through my video and understood the chapter and prepared it so i have given it to you that is how will you distinguish between ferrous chloride and ferric chloride just to revise it once with you you can use any of the uh, reagents sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide and in both the cases the observations would be dirty green insoluble precipitate for a ferrous salt reddish brown insoluble precipitate for a ferric salt so you just check the observation learn them and write it down i have a similar question for you give a chemical test to distinguish between copper sulfate and calcium sulfate so copper salt and a calcium salt here you can take sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide because sodium hydroxide copper will give you a pale blue insoluble precipitate calcium salt will give you white insoluble precipitate so this is one more question that i have given now i am going to discuss one more type of question that i have written it down for you so let's do it here we go and this is the observation question what do you observe in such questions we don't stress on naming the compound neither do we see the chemical equations and this i am saying on the basis of paper correction your answer sheet answer script are corrected if it is one observation question we straight away check the color change or the solubility of the precipitate here the question is on adding ammonium hydroxide to ferrous sulfate solution what do you observe so the answer is on adding ammonium hydroxide to ferrous sulfate solution an insoluble dirty green precipitate is formed underline the keywords next on adding sodium hydroxide solution in excess to lead nitrate solution so a lead salt and the reagent is sodium hydroxide so when excess of sodium hydroxide is added to lead nitrate solution initially white precipitate formed gets dissolved that means soluble white precipitates so you don't get any colored solution or colorless solution we don't get precipitate 
I have one question for you to answer. That is, what do you observe on heating copper hydroxide? Uh, this is a question from the section effect of heat on chemicals which I am going to do in detail in your one of the chapters. But this since you have already done in standard 9, I have given you, if you remember, copper hydrox hydroxide, sorry, we have done in this chapter just now is a pale blue color precipitate. So a pale blue substance. We have also done this last year where you get copper oxide which is black in color. So your answer would be on heating copper hydroxide, blue changes to black. I have just told you from where we have got we have got it from last year's types of reaction where this blue color gives you a black color with water. I will do more about this section in uh, one of my videos where I will teach you the effect of heat on chemicals. The next type of question that I have taken is name which is also one of the type of questions which you are definitely going to get in a chemistry paper. Where you have to name a gas, you have to name a compound, you have to name a substance, you have to name the precipitate and so on. I have not discussed all. I have only discussed the question related to this chapter. Now that is a hydroxide name, a hydroxide that is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. So we have just seen that it can be copper hydroxide because copper salt with few drops of sodium hydroxide will give you pale blue precipitate of copper hydroxide. In excess of ammonium hydroxide, this will dissolve. So the question says the hydroxide that is soluble and it's copper hydroxide. There can be one more answer also. Please check the table and see what is the answer. The next question. A yellow monoxide that dissolves in hot concentrated alkali. If you go and check the video back for the amphoteric metal, amphoteric metallic oxide, amphoteric metallic hydroxide, where I have mentioned the color also along with equation, you will get this answer. But here I have written the answer that's lead oxide. So a yellow colored monoxide, it dissolves, that means it is reacting with hot concentrated alkali. The third, the metal ion present in a salt solution that gives white precipitate with few drops of sodium hydroxide solution but insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide solution and that is calcium. So the metal ion, calcium, whatever is asked you have to write that. I have just taken one question for you which you can practice similar types in the DIY section. Do it yourself. Write a balanced chemical equation for sodium hydroxide solution added to zinc sulfate first in little then in excess. So here you are going to get two equations. As I have told in the beginning of the video that please learn the chemical equations. You are going to get questions like this. You are also going to get questions where the reactant will be given and the product has to be filled by you. You have to complete the equation and balance them. Okay, so I hope this session will help you a lot. These were some of the types of questions which I have noted down. And very few given to you to practice. Please try out from your textbook. And if you have doubts, please put it in the comment section. Children, please hit the like button, share and subscribe my channel. Do hit the bell icon to get notified about the upcoming videos of mine. Okay, bye children.